I brought you actually uh, my well my name you can already see. Um, I'm working at ETH and I'm using um, Urban or Esri uh, for both uh, research and teaching. So I brought you two cases. One is a applied research case. And another one is a teaching project. Maybe my background uh, to mention, I originally started, or I did study architecture. I also graduated. I never worked as an architect. And then I also did a master in real estate. Um, I had my own consulting firm, and then I went to do some research on how to do planning better in the future, um, starting 10 years back. <laughs> and. Um, yeah, now I'm going back into industry, hopefully with the knowledge gained in research to really um, change planning and um, yeah, using this kind of tools. Um, the project uh, City of Baden, a small city, um, not far out, 17 minute train ride from Zurich, um, roughly 20,000 resident residents and 30,000 full-time jobs. Um, they were very um, mutig. What's mutig? Um, courageous in in um, starting this. <laughs> we had a um, like uh, the uh, the council had to vote whether they want to go for it, and it was uh, uh, anonymous. Uh, like everyone was for it. They were saying like we're we're buying a cat in the sack, but we want this cat. <laughs> Like about two thirds through, yeah, they didn't want the cat in the sack anymore um, because they got scared of that something good could happen. <laughs> so we look back, uh, it was two uh, no, 2018 basically that we started or that we had the data from, I'm not quite sure anymore, but 1918, that's how the neighborhood that we will be uh, looking at um, looked like. So what we see now is that like over here we already look pretty much the same before but then we have nicely sprawled some residential um, into that neighborhood. Um, originally they wanted to only redevelop or like think of how to redevelop this triangle here and uh, I kind of, with my research, I developed the concept that we should think in neighborhoods, not just in plots. And uh, I did this kind of like 500 meter radius, 10 minutes walking definition and uh, indicators. And uh, yeah, because we have forests and mountains um, that cannot be part of a circle, um, we ended up having 46 hectares instead of 78 hectares that we can actually plan the future of uh, urban development in that neighborhood, maybe a little background on, on the project. The idea was to early talk to landowners and, and um, the public, general public, that we present things, that we uh, confront them with that, um, because it's a very central location. The train station is just over here. Um, well, that they should take on more residents within their neighborhood. And uh, that the idea is that we kind of have this co-design collaborative way of um, doing it. Um, I brought some videos. I hope it works or else. Yeah, maybe for those who are not so familiar, um, the airport, the city of Zurich, where we are right now. And then we just could take the train over there to the city of Baden. Exactly, and then we get closer. <laughs> um, that's how it looks in 3D right now. With all the blue buildings have some kind of um, heritage, uh, more or less binding. Um, yeah, like back in back then, or no? See, I, like we kind of like gave up on the following the red line, so we made this black line. <laughs> But actually, yeah, what we would have liked is uh, the red line. So we added some forest and trees because half of the city of Baden is trees. Uh, forest, I mean. Um, so trees or yeah, trees. 
Um, exactly. So we have like different neighborhoods that we also looked into. That's kind of like the villa neighborhood, also like this part. And uh, this is like the mixed use neighborhood. And this is um, the residential, not as not as good off or as as wealthy as as this neighborhood. Um, let me see what's coming next. I think it should be zoning stuff. Yeah, we put in the zoning. Uh, the rules in the city of Bonn are kind of like two times or three times or two thirds of the number of levels times something. And then we're like, okay, just forget it sort of because we actually want to write new rules. So we only um, approximately um, defined the rules that are in the current zoning uh, to show them that some of their buildings can, could not be built the way they are built now if you apply the zoning that they have. They have some overlays with uh, where you are allowed to put higher buildings, um, high rise. So we have kind of like uh, center zone, the set five, we have public, a lot of public zone. And um, yeah. Come on, can we move fast? Oh, I guess that's the W3, the zoning envelopes on the buildings, the overlays that I was mentioning earlier with the high rises. They have two types of high rise. One is I think 55 and the other is 70 meters. So then we have these scenarios that we plan on, um, like we have these zones and uh, we have currently, we put uh, on each parcel, we put the number of residents and shops that are currently there. So we have currently almost 2000 residents and 1800 shops. Then we did yeah, the metrics um, on these um, scenarios. We have like, uh, the original target was to have 15,000 residents and shops, which would be a, a good, good number in if you could build the whole thing. So we kind of like factored it down. So yeah, you can see now the scenario without high rise where you just have to build more on the hills and uh, where you have um, more or less a uniform height. This is like a special plan that they have right now. And then the third scenario would be like high rises in 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 the uh, residential area. Um, yeah. Then we also did some more matrix. We tried to calculate the green stuff, like um, how many, uh, there's a rule in a, that per resident you need eight, uh, eight square meter of green and for job you need five square meter. Then we also have, they also have a parking regulation on how many parkings you need to add if you add some residential or, or um, some jobs. So yeah. We kind of have this uh, met, uh, metrics table. And uh, yeah, then kind of you can see what you should have and then what we have existing and then what we added. And one of the findings was A, they didn't know how much park. Well, first they were surprised how, how little residents they had in relation to the jobs. Second, they were surprised how many parkings they had. They even asked again after they finished the project because they still didn't believe. And then I said, OK, you just go count them as well if you don't believe me. And then clearly they couldn't build any more residential if they kept their parking regulations because 
I mean, it's so much, so so many parkings that yeah, in the end, I mean, they already have a very high traffic volume. This not takes fifty thousand cars per day passing, so they they maybe can get rid of the um, the noise problem because the cars are just not moving anymore. And yeah, this is the one I was mentioning with the model share that you kind of, if you have less people, it would be kind of different. So you would have less cars if you're denser uh, or more cars. But overall, we're kind of recommended to them to change their parking regulation that we could bring down the traffic in that sense because we have more residents that, yeah, perfect uh, public transportation. So you don't really need all these um, cars. Okay, next. And then we also did some suitability analysis. Uh, we, it's more like a probability analysis that we used it. We have like these layers of who owns it, how old is the building, how good is public transport, do they already have a project on it, is it protected, um, what's the zoning, so that we could then more in the sense of 4D, that like how high is the chance that something will be developed in the near or the later future. Um, and then, yeah, I think back then uh, the viewpoints were new to be set before you didn't. So, yeah, we also set some viewpoints. So that's kind of, uh, if I really click this one, we would end up being somewhere up here, I think. And maybe then look down this way. And what, uh, a thing that was like, we have this um, colors according to the space use. So blue would be residential, green would be dark green, I think is office, and light green is um, public, public use, and then the purple would be the retail. Uh, but yeah, they didn't really like to have these colors to look at. So I think we did either one version where we gave them all the same color, which yeah, in the end, yeah, it's kind of hard to see what you have. Um, and another version is that we out uh, put it into um, into online and give them a different um, attribute color in terms of, I think it was the number of levels they had. So I think that's done too. Yeah, and then here's like this, I think that was also fairly new then that you could this, uh, what is it, um, mapillary views, yeah, yeah. that it could be on the street level and that's what really where like the trees would have come in handy, especially in the development. <laughs> uh, we did put trees then in the end in, in online, um, so, um, but yeah, if you have it in online, it's just not uh, metric wise, etc. you cannot really uh, take full. Yeah, we have kind of the existing one here. And then yeah, I think uh, Brooks or I don't remember, someone already showed this. And yeah, they were like saying like in terms of the heights of the of the buildings, they were saying like, yeah, this, uh, this one is a uh, heritage. And uh, you have to to see it from wherever, right? And then we said, like, well, you can see it from there. Doesn't really matter how high it is. Plus, should we just get the heritage guy to be part of this discussion? And they say no. So a no for me means it's uh, one of the bullshit bingos that happen a lot. That if you don't want change, you just find some excuses. Um, so. Yeah, what, what, what's normal uh, across Switzerland, I think the whole world is a 2D zoning, right? Where you just have some, some colors and then somewhere you have a lengthy PDF. So with urban, you can kind of have these zoning regulations as a volume. And yeah, some last um, kind of, I think that was online to have um, distinguish between low rise and high rise. So these are the scenarios that I was mentioning before, high rise in, in this um, part of the city, and then no high rise and high rise on this neighborhood. So my question now is, which one you think the general public voted for? 
maybe as a background in Switzerland, people hate high rises. So we were like, we know what they're going to pick. So what did they pick? Did they pick the one with the high rise at the, as, as it is here, uh, no high rise or high rise at the center? They were very smart. They, uh, it feels like they know urban economics as opposed to the planners that appear not to know. They said, here, high rises make the most sense because it's close to the center. So we ha can have more people walking to the um, already existing infrastructure. And they have some vacancy over here. So if we have more people within walking distance to this retail, we can have better retail. So. To our surprise, they went for the option that is kind of like the smartest to do. And um, we were kind of happy about that. Not so much the planners. Um, yeah, because the target of the study was to mitigate um, yeah, emission um, that you, we use our resources, especially also the land, better and more effectively and that you would retrofit the neighborhood into a 10-minute neighborhood, that you would have more people on the same grounds. And the process was that we would like, yeah, um, use urban and visualize, calculate metrics and volumes and show and discuss on where to go. And in the end, the idea was to write urban new rules into their zoning plan. Um, and some other things like, yeah, adapt the parking regulations and have a share of um, housing that is um, non-profit and also <laughs> tax. Um, but yeah, they got, as I mentioned, they got scared and they just now went back to how they normally do it. They only looked at this triangle and their pride is that they have now a design that is not really changing anything. I mean, although it will be changing also many things because whoever cannot live in that neighborhood will now live somewhere farther out and come to the city with the car um, to consume. So my second project, I don't really have many slides, but I have a link that you, if you feel like, can look at uh, later. It's uh, the teaching project that I made three rounds so far, one of the city of Zurich, the Lindenplatz. The second one was in Kigali. <laughs> and I mean, when the professor said it's integrated discipline, uh, let's do Kigali two weeks before the semester starts. We're like, we're never going to have an urban model for Kigali, right? I mean, how is that even ever going to happen? Ta-ta, we did it. We got really uh, amazingly, we got parcels, we got, um, not trees, but we got 2.5, 2.5 uh, uh, buildings. And yeah, the last round was Calgary, uh, Missing Middle. Calgary, because I uh, have a, like a longer exchange with a professor of the University of Calgary that comes to learn from the city of Zurich. And so uh, we thought we could learn or teach or whatever uh, with the uh, city of Calgary. Missing middle, middle big topic uh, in, in not only in Calgary. Um, um, not that we would not miss something. So <laughs> one question was what's Zurich missing, but missing middle meaning not, not, not single family dwelling and then high rise, but like something in between the one we looked at in Baden and um, yeah, here maybe it's it's a combination of like learning the tool, learning how to add more. Oh, I don't need that was not meant to have sound. But here that was like at the summer course where we were in the same space, and it's kind of a mix of in in everyone in their computer and sharing the screen where you can like see how things are changing. It's kind of like the web web thing that students really kind of also like that they can work in the same thing together and uh, have different foci. We also went, we also usually go to, to some excursions that would be Europa Alley, and then we have guests for reviews. And uh, well, I mean, s social media can lead you to be, oh, what does that mean? 
to be uh, all of a sudden to have your uh, teaching um, project in the news in Calgary. <laughs> so, so you're like, okay, sure. I mean, um, and what was really well, that one's not so uh, nice. But what's really nice that they put the link to the story apps of the students. So now some Calgarians <laughs> went in there, I guess, and uh, had a peek on what the students did. Um, it's a um, three hour per week course where they have no knowledge of urban. It's architects, it's um, spatial planners, it's geographers, it's urb what are they called? Environmental system engineers. I think. And yeah, what I found out, they have no idea about urban design, uh, although they study at ETH, or, or maybe because they study at ETH. And therefore, um, yeah, we, we all tried our best, and um, we can all do better, like, yeah, I, yeah, there, uh, Sylvia was saying, right? But um, yeah, so. The idea was, in the end, to have some story maps to share, uh, to present, um, with urban and online, and uh, yeah, feel free to browse through um, what they did and what they got. Thank you. Huh? Yeah, any questions? Yeah. Go ahead. So first of all, thank you so much for sharing. Uh, I know about these projects, but I've never seen them presented by you, only by Till, mostly. Oh, really? Okay. So it's also good to, to hear <laughs> from you for once. Um, very, very cool. So first for the bottom project, um, if you could go back in time, and restarted, what do you think you would do differently so that they're more maybe receptive to the process? Or like, could we do something from an application point of view so that- At trees, no. <laughs> <laughs> At trees, yeah. Um, I, I think, I mean, um, yeah. I think this is a Swiss way of doing things, right? You do, for instance, you do not go to EU, but you look what EU is doing. And when you, EU is doing something, you apply it to yourself. So right now, no one has done it differently from what everyone is used. Uh, I don't know also very much of a case that has done it differently that I could like really show them. And therefore, they're too scared to really be the first one to do something different. Um, yeah, I think there's not much that could be really be done differently. In, I mean, yeah, I so think it's really, well, it, yeah, it's really uh, hard for them to really get away from what they've been doing for their whole profession. So, I mean, yeah, what, what I'm trying with the teaching project or the teaching is to have the young people get tools that they could then go into the industry and say, hey, guys, why don't we use that ourselves? And then uh, they kind of like can do these things themselves um, because many municipalities are too small to do uh, zoning revisions and all these things themselves. So they hire planning offices. And uh, I don't think very many, um, they're doing the revision of zoning, but I don't think they're doing it in 3D now. So, mm -hmm. and I really think we should go 4D because it's not the green grass that we can build or the green land that we can build on. It's one building after the other that we have to, to see um, yeah, how it changes and how we can add more people to locations that have good service and good public transportation. So I don't really know, no. I wish I knew. 
<laughs> but keep, we keep trying, so maybe one day we're successful. Yeah, we keep hopefully having more Swiss cities using it and showing exactly. maybe bigger cities first and then... Well, I mean, <laughs> who knows? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I have one more question, then I'll, I'll hand it over. Um, so you were showing the story map for where the students put yeah. in information. Um, did they by any chance use web scenes created in urban inside the story yeah. map as well? Yeah, I think they did. Um, um, I don't remember exactly which one, but one of them, I think. I mean, webs. Yeah, was it web scenes? Or is it just urban? I, um, for sure they put urban as a... Just embedded? Yeah. But not the web scene, maybe. I'm not sure. I'll have a look. Yeah, I'll have, a look. have maybe a look. Maybe I'll get back yeah. to you. Because yeah, yeah, we yeah. try to improve that integration a little bit. Yeah, I mean, yeah, the thing is, like, only... No, I don't think it's... It's 20 students and not even a handful has ever used ArcGIS. So, mm -hmm. so already pro and uh, already online and uh, urban is already mm -hmm. a big thing for them. So... Okay. Yeah. Cool. Very nice. But Thanks for sharing. Yeah, sure. Every time. Every time. Um, I guess you so you probably already answered it because you said that your students generally have no experience yet with ArcGIS. Um, is that also the reason why you don't have City Engine in the curriculum? Oh, uh, well, I mean, as I, as I said, we have only very limited time and <laughs> we can only do one thing, but it doesn't mean that we stick with that forever. I mean, it can also be that in another semester we would be using um, City Engine. Uh, or the, the integration, right? the two together as this like, I think holistic it's just, it's planning It's too much to ask system. for them yeah. to, to learn two things. Um, because in I mean, three hours a week, yes, <laughs> exactly. Because they're mainly architect. I mean, half of them are architects. They don't even know code, right? I mean, so maybe when you go visual with your thingy, then we can. No, but architect. The, yeah, but yeah. like student. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, they. Yeah, don't. I'm just trying to think how to, because it starts here, right? Like the adoption of City Engine or products in general, obviously yeah. start at at school level, university level, yeah. um, and the more that gets used yeah. during the studies, the more it'll get used out in the field. Absolutely. Um, so, yeah. I, mean, were, I, I attended the course while back some point, yep. yeah, but um, yeah. Okay. Hi, uh, uh, yeah. So I can fill in a little bit on that one because uh, I've been teaching in three universities in the UK. And uh, originally, we use City Engine to, to, to as a middleware, let's say software, to create urban scapes in order to put them in VR. Because I think that was what was more interesting at the time for uh, urban planning offices, was to be able to quickly generate urban environments and stick them to VR so that you can do the, the VR exper uh, experiences. Uh, and then uh, I think the um, one of possibly the, uh, an issue with City the, there were a few issues with City Engine. Firstly, as you said, some of the students were not very code. Uh, yeah, they're not very very. So it was a bit difficult for them to learn both uh, GIS stuff and uh, some analytics in Python and this and that and then also kind of try to. Um, on the other hand, there were some of them who picked it up really quickly, a handful of them, but there were, and they just delved into it very fast, but there were very, very few. Uh, and then the other issue was that um, I think at the time there was, an, uh, I think there's a there's much bigger demand for uh, in, in education for either uh, delving in, uh, in serious data analytics when it comes to coding, so like uh, serious Python and things like that, or extremely high quality rendering uh, experiences. And City Engine, I feel, kind of falls a bit in, in the middle. 
and it's um, yeah, it's not is not quite clear yet how 3D is is useful for uh, kind of like more generalized uses. So, for example, when you presented the um, the three the three cases where you had the whether people like the high rise or the do you think that it would be the same whether you present it in 3D or 2D? Or do you think the 3D visualization played a role in, in, in people's decision? Maybe back back to your question also. Um, we did we also did a project, um, it's in the Future City Lab Global uh, on the city of Turi. And we also presented just the gray volumes, right? And they're like, what, it's a gray wall. And then we kind of photoshopped <laughs> facades on, on, on the high rises particular and then we went again to the public and they're like oh it's not a problem I mean we already have high rises popping up so if you add some more green and some benches when we when we're walking then uh, I don't see a problem right so I think uh, this level of detail that we can provide here can maybe be a barrier on the acceptance, but I think it's false then to not do 3D just because you might scare people with the third dimension, because in the end you should really think in at least three dimensions when you're talking about space um, and uh, think of references. I mean, they, they all kept forgetting how ugly the one, two high rises they have there um, and no one really um, is bothered by them anymore. They have yeah, one here and one there. So it's it's just something that you can get used to, but um, or sometimes you forget that they're there, although they're ugly. So it's kind of and c maybe also coming back to your uh, city engine question. Back when I used it, it was not possible to load the existing um, existing parcel structure. Maybe that has changed. I don't know. I haven't used it in a while. And so it's for a real case. It's not, it was not, uh, yeah, applicable for real cases. Because if you, yeah, want to do what you want to, like, yeah, do this, then you, you cannot have a generically generated city, right? So um, that's one of the reasons also then uh, why we or I kind of then switch to urban. Um, although, yeah, I mean, it has its limitations and it would be nice to do both, but yeah. Yeah, no, I was just thinking about your question and, and your comment about the students. And I experienced that as well, where there were a few students that would pick it up and run with it and they could sit in the corner and focus and other students that, you know, kind of, how does this fit into what we're doing? So um, I, when I started school, I was in this geo design program that turned into more of a urban design and geo design for geospatial technology system that I ended up teaching in. And so we ended up giving the students context. What problem do you want to solve? And now you, these are the tools that can help you visualize it. And I know also in my professional career, having uh, a 2D plan versus a 3D plan. Actually, I've had like my big old chunky laptop sitting in front of people at a planning meeting. And they, you know, there's a lot of arguments that happen in that room, uh, I've seen chairs thrown <laughs> when there's 2D pieces of paper and people are just saying, this red color is good for you, you know? And then when you see it in 3D, they're like, wow, that's great. And I can see where my house is. Well, can we change this? And then you give them a set of Legos and have them start to play on, on top of the piece of paper of exactly what that volume looks like. And if they can also envision what it looks like for them to walk down the street. I mean, saying that you're gonna put investment in the neighborhood versus um, especially one that might need some investment. And then realizing that investment still leaves a streetscape looking stark mm -hmm. and uninhabitable, then you start to really understand, like, I think the impacts. And so I think the context the students get of what problem they're trying to solve before they jump into 3D, it makes all the difference, at least in my experience and in my career. So 
the transparency um, was a big part. And then I think this integration with urban is uh, key because now you have all of these metrics and things that when you're going back and forth between the programs, it's enriching the design work that's happening. So that's just an added comment. Yeah, and I, maybe again to your question, I think um, well, what's, yeah, what kind of also gave us a hard time is the, the landscaping part or the streetscaping where they're like, really like, yeah, how's it gonna look? Like, could we even have this street that has a lot of cars now have no, no cars, how could it look? And then we kind of try to do it in uh, online. Um, but then in online, you cannot really, yeah, do some of the things that you can do <laughs> in urban and then you're kind of like s stuck. I think, yeah, I think at one, uh, in one layer, we added then the trees f from online into the urban. Uh, so it's kind of like, yeah, this work around that work, but yeah. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. <laughs>